What's going on everybody? This is Games Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that I hear quite often, and that's the question is, is Rise of Kingdoms dying? So today we're going to be talking about what I think on that topic and giving you guys some data behind that as well of what I think is to come for Rise of Kingdoms, whether or not it is going down or going up in popularity. So the first thing before we get into the data that I want to bring up first is the fact that we are still getting new commanders. I think this is one of the biggest indicators on whether or not the game is going to be staying around much longer. And the, the main reason why is because it takes a lot of time, money, and resources to invest into creating new commanders with new skills that, you know, act different ways with different commanders, um, with like synergy and, you know, um, like countering. Uh, and that takes a lot of time, energy, and money. And so if Lilith is still releasing new commanders, that is obviously a very, very good sign. Um, the other thing that we want to see is, you know, more events that are coming out, such as the Alliance Mobilization. This is a brand new event that just came out just a couple months ago. Um, plus, on top of that, we have new KVK formats. Uh, we, we have lots of new things that are still coming into the game. Um, you know, still, we still have Ark of, uh, we still have Osiris League. Um, there are still a lot of things, a lot of big staples in Rise of Kingdoms that have stayed the same, and a lot of new things that we've been getting as well in-game. Then of course you have you know game modes like Champions of Olympia, where you know they're still working on trying to optimize it. They're obviously this one is is not all that great. Um, you know Champions of Olympia, a lot of people hate it. Very few actually like it. But like I said before, the fact that they are investing into um, you know trying to optimize those events, creating new events, bringing new commanders into the game. Um, you know in my opinion a little bit too fast bringing new commanders in the game. Um, you know new gear as well with the new leadership gear. Um, we were seeing a lot of different things um, that are coming into the game that I think are proof that we are going to see Rise of Kingdoms staying a little bit longer. But at the same time, I do want to give you guys some data as well, backing up that claim. So this is Google Trends, if you guys are unaware of what this is. This is basically what Google uses to track popularity, which if you didn't know the algorithm, if you guys have ever heard that term before, the algorithm kind of chooses what to promote based on what people are searching. And so here we have Rise of Kingdoms Lost Crusade, which is, you know, the title of the game. Um, we're looking at the popularity in the last five years worldwide. And that's important because we don't want to, you know, single out any countries. We also want to make sure we get a full picture of, you know, when it first came out, which is just a little over five years ago to now in 2023. So the release of Rise of Kingdoms was May 24th, 2018. So it was just about exactly five years ago. So if we take a look at this chart, you can see the interest over time we're going to bring this up to 2020. And so you can see right here, as we keep on scrolling on this map, we can see that we have August 5th is when this starts because, you know, it's exactly five years ago. Um, and the time this recording it is July 30th. And so we're going back about five years. And Rise of Kingdoms was first created back right before this chart starts. So obviously the popularity isn't super popular. But you can see right around March 10th to March 16th is really when Rise of Kingdoms started to pick up. You can see the interest spiking over those little areas. And, you know, obviously during COVID, we saw the biggest increase, which would have been right about here, which is actually exactly when I started playing, <laughs> was right before COVID. Um, so you can see this little jump right here. I literally started playing like the week or two weeks before COVID started. Uh, probably like right about here is when I started. Um, and then COVID hit, and obviously the popularity boomed a little bit. Um, and so you have this peak here, and then obviously like when things shut down, um, people have more time to play video games, you know, they're, they're locked inside, they're, they're not going to work. Um, so you have this big boom in the Rise of Kingdoms popularity of people searching Rise of Kingdoms on the web. You can see it is a web search that we are looking at right now. You can also go by YouTube search, uh, news search, but we're going off of web search um, just because that's going to be the most popular. Uh, not so much searching on YouTube. Um, that would be something that'd be interesting for YouTubers. If you are interested in making Rise of Kingdoms content, that would be something you should be looking into is whether or not it is popular on YouTube. But this is just on web search because if people are searching on the web, they're probably trying to download the game. So that's why we have it on this map here. And then as we keep on going through this list, you can see it kind of stagnates here. And we get all the way to 2021 and it's still kind of just in the same area here. Um, so, you know, we're not going down horribly, but we do kind of bottom out here, similar to where we were right before COVID. And obviously we still have some of these big jumps here as well. 
but these are probably you know just like patch notes or little updates that are coming into the game and you know it, it's you know comes right back down kind of gets back to the homeostasis back to the baseline but then we have a big update and i believe this was the viking civilization the partnership with the vikings which was super super popular and you can see that by this chart this exploded up just at the time of the vikings release so this was in the beginning of 2022 you can see january 23rd to 29th is when we hit the peak at on this chart which is a hundred percent interest over time you can see with interest over time we have that numbers represent search interest relative to the highest point on a chart given the time and the region value of 100 is the peak popularity for the term a value of 50 means the term is half as popular a score of zero means there is not enough data for this term so you can see right here is when we get the peak of the vikings and then we kind of come right back down but as we keep on going through this chart you can see as we get all the way to where we are currently in 2023 we still haven't gotten back to this baseline here, which really means that, you know, Rise of Kingdoms is continuing to stay more popular than it was during COVID, um, which I think is a lot of people would agree with me is that it, it was the hottest time for video games because people were home. They weren't, you know, going to work, um, you know, because they were working from home. So they were able to play video games a lot more. Now everybody's back at work. People, I mean, some people are still working from home. Um, some people have, you know, like part time jobs from home, that kind of stuff. But a lot of people are back in the office. They're back at their jobs, um, you know, working full time. So they don't have enough time for video games or as much time for video games. But we still see the popularity is still spiked up from our baseline, which we see right here in early 2020. And also in all of 2021, we really didn't see any uptick uh, in 2021 at all. But then in 2022, with that release with the Vikings, a partnership really boomed the popularity of Rise of Kingdoms. And that really hasn't gone away. You can see these little spikes here correlate with new commanders being released into the game. And I believe this is why we are seeing such a rampant amount of commanders being released in the game because they see how much this is improving the analytics behind, you know, interest over time. Uh, and so the more commanders are releasing, the more interest they get in the video game. So you have a lot of pros and a lot of cons with this. We'll jump right back into the game here so we can take a look at this. But basically what we want to talk about is the fact that I don't think they're going to slow down with commanders. And that really changes the way that we should be prioritizing our accounts. Because if you go based off how commanders used to come into the game, which was, you know, every three to four to five months or so, you had enough time to expertise commanders and then start saving up for future commanders. So, for example, I have 759 gold heads right now. So I have enough to expertise a legendary commander right away. But if a new commander gets released, then a month or two later, I won't have enough for that commander. And so, yes, that does drive more people to spend if you are a spender in the game. But with new commanders like Hugh and with Justinian coming into the game, people want to use these commanders because they are the new, the best commanders in the game. But with new players, you also want to have enough commanders where they can, you know, have some flexibility with what they want to invest into. Um, and also open up more players to use these commanders earlier on which is what we see in kvk3 now um so you can see you can actually use these commanders in kvk3 as of right now because they're allowing people to use these commanders sooner because when you have these new commanders coming into the game you have these new advertisements and they're not as cringy as they used to be the new advertisements are actually really really solid um you know really cool animations and um not really gameplay but kind of just really cool animations with the new commanders and releasing new commanders allows them to continue those projects. And if they go, like they said before, like going back to a, like a seven month gap between commanders, you're going to have a lot less interest over time because you're going to have, you know, these these stallments where you don't have any really any commanders coming into the game versus the Viking civilization and the um, the Greece civilization. These are booming the interest in Rise of Kingdoms, uh, along with these new commanders as well that definitely goes a long way with increasing the popularity, thus bringing in more money for Rise of Kingdoms. But I think what this really tells us is that Rise of Kingdoms is not dying. And if it was, we would be able to see on this chart, we would um, be either be back to baseline or be below baseline. And considering we are not really even near it, um, you know, we're, we're still above 50% of the highest peak uh, versus here, we were roughly at about 30% of the peak. 
and you know now we're 20 percent above that which is quite a bit um and so with with that being said i don't think that we are going to see rise of kingdoms dying anytime soon and one really cool thing that we can see with google trends as well is we can actually see regions where it is most popular um and we can see with the regions you can see that vietnam singapore the philippines burma and malaysia are actually the most popular searchers during this five year period of time and as we keep on coming down we can also see the different topics that people are searching here as well which obviously is a little bit different because this is you know over the past five years but we can see aptitude passport sun tzu teleportation and commanding officer are the top related topics from rise of kingdoms and then you can see with related searches over here as well uh rise of kingdoms apk rise of kingdoms pc mod rise of kingdoms codes they have a lot more codes that they're coming out with as well um, and then apk mods as well so a lot more interest in rise of kingdoms over this period of time which is definitely a really really good sign for the game and i think especially for people that are you know potentially wanting to make content on this the fact that they are also starting to allow more people to potentially become monetized on YouTube for Rise of Kingdoms and in terms of sponsorships. Uh, you know, they did open up the creator program, which I am a part of right now as an apprentice creator, hopefully being able to get promoted into that, uh, into that next tier to, you know, potentially become officially sponsored. But you can see here with YouTube as well, um, more people are searching it than ever before. And once again, this was with the Viking civilization, but we still are well above that baseline where we were in 2021 and even before COVID. And even during COVID, we're basically at this same peak as we were during COVID. And so this is still a great time for Rise of Kingdoms, not only for potentially content creators, but also for players as well, because more people are interested in the game than ever before. People are still playing the game. You don't have a big decrease in the amount of players. Obviously we do have people that are quitting, um, you know, like big name people that are quitting, but that doesn't mean the game is dying. And so that I wanted to make this video to really showcase not only my thoughts with commanders, but also the actual empirical data as well, because this is really what matters. This is what Lilith is looking at when they are looking at games, because they're a business. They're there to make money. If they're not making money on a video game, they're gonna stop investing into it. They're not gonna be creating new commanders every couple months. They're gonna be stopping. They're gonna stop putting money into the game. They're gonna quit making new stuff. They're gonna keep everything the same just try to draw as much money as possible with as little amount of input as possible with their, their own money. Um, and we are not seeing that from Lilith. We are seeing a lot more involvement from Lilith, a lot more new things in the game and a lot of optimizations as well. So I think these are all really, really good things for the game. And like I said before, I don't think Rise of Kingdoms is dying. I think it is growing even faster than before. Um, and, you know, the analytics and the data prove that. And I think that this is really something that a lot of people really have a lot of trouble coming to terms with uh, because, you know, they might be sick of the game, but that doesn't mean that the game is dying, you know? Um, you know, not everybody is going to love the game long term. You know, some people don't play video games all the time. They don't want to play a game for years and years and years. Other people like the grind aspect of Rise of Kingdoms. Personally, that's what I love about it. On top of that, the community is just really, really great. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the future of Rise of Kingdoms. Thanks for checking out the video. See you guys later.